Hello and welcome to the Unofficial Controller Podcast, your weekly gaming podcast, episode 16, 2019, the gaming year six month review, with me George and as always joined by Tom. Six months review breakdown to my nervous breakdown. Tom, how's it going? I'm okay, thanks, how are you? I am, I am very well. Um, Just want to give any new listeners a bit of a rundown on what the usual course of action is of the show. Let's do that. So cool. we kick things off, as always, with me asking Tom what he's been playing, and then hopefully him asking me what I've been playing. We then slither like a true snake into the news, where we have been out and found the very latest stories in the most darkest regions of the internet. Then we go into the feature, which is the main meat of the show. That's where we'll do every week a retrospective, a deep dive, or or whatever it is, and this week it's the six-month year in review, so we'll find out how good all the latest games and formats have been. Then we pop into probably, although we don't like to admit it, the most popular part of the show, Listener Stingray, where yeah. you tag your geek and game-related pickups and reread through them sarcastically or seriously, <laughs> depending on what is gracing our good eyes. And then after that, we bring in the Immortal One, the real Stingray, the real deal. And we go through the new releases for this week. And then I ask Tom what he's been playing, and he'll probably forget to ask me. And then that's the show one and done. So back to that top of that list, Tom. As I always say, dust off the box, take a bag of sand, swap it with the box, open the box, the key. Put it in the lock and turn. And like two scared archaeologists, Tom, will run from here until the curtain call <laughs> from a great big boulder that is the show, the most mediocre show that iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher and TuneIn can put together. Tom, what have you been playing? Uh, well, after all that rambling, I've had a long time to think. Uh, I was buying you time. You were. You always get me prep well, I must admit. Leading me in, making sure I've pre-read the script... Get you a nice drink to make yeah. sure your throat's warm and lubricated. Mm, yeah, nice coffee. Anyway, moving on. Uh, yeah, so this past week I've been playing Mario Maker 2, um, which I've been designing some new courses on, enjoying some of the... Uh, How many the most... last week you said you used the show, as always, as your celebrity vehicle to get some more downloads of your... <laughs> um, less than average level that you've posted on Mario Maker. I would say it's not the exposure, it's a little bit more about the quality. How many downloads have you had? Did you get the two I promised? No. <laughs> so we're still on five playthroughs and one well, This like. might be a time to ask the loyal listeners. Do you know what, listeners? We, we, we asked you last I week. I think probably some of them have played it and, and uh, done their best to uh, try and keep me sort of motivated. And uh, I've found the problem is at the minute that I get an idea in my head for a course, I make the course or start making it. And then when I go back to it the next day, I've thought of another idea. So I start another course. So I only have one completed course. Um, and Have you I've finished s- the unofficial controller level yet? No. You're sacked. Sacked. Gone. Gone. I'm working on it. I'm You've working got the rest of the show to change my mind. Um, with the... Uh, Farmerton does not need another unemployed ex-podcast host. No. We know what happened to the last one. We do. He fell through a combine. Oh. Anyway, tell me more <laughs> about Mario. In fact, I was going to... Because the fans had not gone on our unique call to action to your page, and I understand why that is, because, as I say, <laughs> you know, I'd rather clean dog poo from the underside of my shoe. Than probably it's, it's based on Luigi's there. Mansion. It's a great course. Well, let's just talk about Mario Maker 2. Tell me more about it. I've been playing some really cool courses based on... Uh, I played one based on Breath of the Wild. Um, one uh, that was done like Pong, where you hit, you, you're hit, you jumping up with Mario and you're hitting a switch and that's pushing a bar up. And then there's another bar the other side. It's just ingenious, some of the ideas people come up with. It really is clever. I tell you what, Ninty, just roll out a bag of tools, knock yourself out, guys. It is, we it's can't even like be that. bothered anymore. I don't think we'll see another two D Mario. Well, you heard it here first. Well, and as I've proved in the past, Switch Lite, PS4 backwards compatible, didn't get that one quite right. 
But um, welcome anyway. to the official Tom is Awesome podcast, <laughs> your weekly gaming <laughs> podcast, where we bow down to the glory that is Tom and his gamer knowledge. <laughs> Tom, may us mere mortals, me and the listeners, are we allowed on the boat? Or yeah, of we... course you can, because you provide facts. I'm more of a rumours man, like I, Mis- I, I Mystic Meg feel... from the lottery back in the day. Well, we're five anyway. minutes in. We're you digressing. Me what I we're digressing. I'm going to get to that. Our unique call to action has been lost in the mist. We'll of... get to that. We'll get it's to gone. That, that moment what, what, gone. What have you been playing? Tell me. Tell Minecraft. me all about it. Minecraft. Yes. Another world building game. One that's slightly more imaginative than that Mario Maker. <sighs> the numbers aren't wrong, though, are they? The numbers that is aren't a wrong. Monster of a sales a machine, huge isn't it? Game, and to be honest, I'm still finding enjoyment in it. I've also been taking the time to play uh, Days Gone. Have you finished that yet? (laughs) Tom, God's sake. Six month review. Some of us, uh, some of us have other things to do. Yeah. I often write a script. I'm often toiling away writing a script or research, and I look up and you're playing Overwatch. (laughs) (laughs) You. uh, Anyway, and I've also been playing on the. PlayStation 1. I've put one of those in my private sleeping area, away from you. Uh, and, and there I've been playing Ridge Racer, bit of Resident Evil 1. How do you feel those hold up now? Resident Evil 1, still fun to play. It's obviously very uh, cliched, that game now. They must look on par with Minecraft, really. Why? Why? The pixelated graphics. Why? <laughs> What's it ever done to you? It's the Fortnite, isn't it, of the gaming world? It's not even that. It's never hurt you. <laughs> Fortnite never hurt you. It never lashed out. The bigger boys don't like it anymore. <laughs> so you don't like it anymore. No. And that's fair enough, I guess, Tom, because it's, it's not for everybody. No, I suppose it's not. Um, moving on. Speaking uh, of things which are for everybody, Tom. Yeah. The Unofficial Controller Podcast. So, listener... Uh, or listeners, if you're listening in with family or friends, yes, we um, we want to make a bit of a plea. We've been 13th in the UK gaming podcast chart. We really, really want to get into the top 10. And we feel like with your help, we could do that. Your help, listeners. And what we need is you to subscribe. Absolutely. Primarily yeah. on iTunes, we need you to subscribe and convince as many people as you can to subscribe. Because bizarrely, that's how iTunes works out whether your show's popular or That's not. That's how the little computer mind works. That's how the, the green... sky net of iTunes. The green screen of iTunes. <laughs> I should imagine that's a 486 running a 16 bit graphics yeah. card. That's for sure. Um, I mean, so... we're, so, we're sorry, we're, we're mega grateful of all the feedback we get and everything so far, um, but we feel we can really get in the top 10 and, and show you guys just sort of how successful this podcast can, can become. Well, your show listener yeah and your family which is all of us would really appreciate well we appreciate everything that's happened but we think that we can help if you're enjoying the show unless you just love mental torture or sleep deprivation the, the, you play us at night to help you through that yeah. or you know you can help us be discovered by other people who can enjoy this show and contribute to the conversation of family just like you do, and the bigger it gets, we think the better it will get. Well, the problem we have, the county council have said, Farmerton will have funding cut if we don't get more people on board. So we've got all these houses in the village. Come and join the uh, unofficial controller podcast community. Welcome. Tom, that really, this week, we've really overdone it for self-indulgent twaddle. So, <laughs> welcome. Moving on. Moving on, swiftly, the news. We've scoured the very darkest regions of the internet to bring you the latest stories. First up, monkeys in balls. So yeah, they're still a thing. Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD, a new version of Super Monkey Ball, updated us to its release in the back of the year as of October 29th, 2019 to be precise. This version's featuring upcoming features include revamped controls, updated visuals and a brand new decathlon mode. This seems to be a revamp stroke remake of the 2006 Wii games. Keep your eyes not your bananas, peeled. Hmm. See what I've done there? Slick. Uh, uh, Tom, what 
I never thought that this would be a 2019 hook front and hot news story, so I'm guessing that the uh, the green screen must have been going through a dark time this week. Yeah, it's been a bit slow this week for news, but we've uh, we've tried to to get what we can. Clearing that nonsense off the table like a monkey in a ball. Do you not want to discuss a little bit about that? Did you ever play this back in the day? Yes. Did you enjoy it? Being a Sega fan? It was okay then. Yeah. I think the GameCube version would have been better to do than the Wii one. I hope they get the motion control sorted out as they weren't particularly amazing. I just think that the barrel's getting scraped at this point. Would you have preferred to see a new IP for Sega? Every time a new yeah. IP for yeah. Sega. Um, okay, moving on. Um, something a little different, sir. Oh. As retail continues uh, its slow draw of death, um, GameStop in the US is mixing things up and uh, IGN broke the story that GameStop has been struggling financially, even selling off divisions of itself for $700 million, yet still lose half a billion dollars. That's phenomenal. Yeah, that's not great, is it? No. Uh, it looks like they'll be partnering with huge marketing company R slash GA and looks to reaffirm its place in video game culture. It's going to try and offer unique store concepts, e-leagues, and try selling strictly retro games and hardware. Wow. Well, you know, supporting the games industry by selling a cartridge that, you know, everyone's took money out of, including your gran. <laughs> uh, that's not going to help them very much, is it? And they're looking to do e-leagues and... There might be some money if in... Is there anything like game in the UK? Walking in there is almost like having your soul removed by your small toe. I'll defend my local game store a little bit because I really enjoy going in there because the people who work there are quite passionate about gaming. I get your point. I've been in others and they've been a bit very like, can we sell you this extra? Can we sell you? And I know they're based... It's probably... not even that. They don't even talk to you. If you buy something, you look at your gone no, out. That's like, what a... are you doing here? I will say the one I use is, is very good and I've enjoyed going to a few midnight launches there and it's good good crowd and good stuff. But... I think that's uh, something we might look at in the future, guys, is um, doing a, a look at how we buy physical games and um, and where we get them from. So um, something to look forward to. Wow. That would be a, an exciting feature to look forward to. <laughs> Tom, you sell the concept to me like nothing else. <laughs> uh, if Tom ever comes up with an absolutely belting idea, get him to draw it in crayon because verbally more exciting. he's going to destroy you. <laughs> Next up in the news, we like this song, so why don't you step away from the jukebox? Fans can rest assured as we finally get confirmation the immortal legend of the business, Yuzo Koshiro, will be working on the Streets of Rage 4 soundtrack. His music being firmly lodged in fans' minds as the music of Streets of Rage. We welcome this announcement and get a little more excited about this incoming game. He'll be joined by Motohiro Kawashima, his co-collaborator from Streets of Rage 2 and 3. Tom, possibly the best news to be associated yeah, with been... this god-awful remake. It's not... It's a, it's a sequel. sequel. Sequel, whatever. I've been waiting for this news for this game for a while, and that's great. I'm well chuffed about he's back on board for the soundtrack. Um, I see uh, they brought the some of the Streets of Rage soundtracks out on those data discs, the, the uh, vinyls. Yeah. They were pretty cool with cool Very... artwork. Yeah. Well worth checking out if you're a fan. Um, but yeah, Streets Rage 4, it's going to be interesting where we see that this year because it's gone a bit quiet. Didn't really hear anything at E3 about it. Maybe it'll be shown at a smaller sort of indie game show because it's obviously not like... Are you a... looking forward to that genuinely? Yeah. I love those games and I, I think it's... That art style is a bit strange, I must admit. But did um, it, it, out of all the games out there that needed sequels, why, would... why that? They don't make that many of them anymore, do they? Side scrolling beat 'em ups. There, there probably are, and I'm going to get slated for not thinking of them. But every week, Tom, yeah. Um, I, I genuinely think I'm looking forward to that. Okay, I'm. Are you going to play that through with me? We'll have a game night. No, maybe. I, I mean, it's your it's turn. Fun, it's fun, mate. Turn to buy the game because I bought No Way Out. Okay, that's fair enough. That for was both a good, of us. Yeah, good little game that. It was. It was better than this is going to be. Than Streets of Rage 4? Look, Streets of Rage, if you're going to do something with it, bring it through and make it a new reimagining. Don't go lazy and do a half arsed dialed in, remake, stroke reimagining, stroke 4 of the original. Like every other game from that era has transitioned to 3D. It's got awesome... Imagine if that was a little bit more of a, a 3D beat-em-up that was actually a good... 
three D beam Oof. and Streets of Rage transition. There's not many of those anymore. Transitioned is there? and made uh, made it not just this six nine nine PSN Xbox Live arcade classic. Why not make this something that's thirty nine ninety nine and people want to play because it's exciting? You, you think Sega would get on board, wouldn't you, and go, "There's some that's money." That's not a new and... IP. That's not a new game. That's a mixtape. Mm. Disappointing. I'll hold my judgment. Well, I'll buy it if you play it through. Deal. That's the only reason that game's going to sell for gamblebuster numbers, my friend. Oh. Nostalgia. I was meant to tell you about something else I got up to this week, but we breezed over that. Don't you worry. Any more news, Tom? And if the fans want to get in contact with us and tell us that we've mispronounced Yoshi Kuihama's name, <laughs> which I've just done, if we've got the news <laughs> wrong, if we've started the wrong version of Monkey Ball, if you want to hate me for hating on Streets of Rage 4, Tom, how would they collectively get in touch with me? Uh, so how most of you do is reach us on a direct message or comment on Instagram or Twitter. Um, and also you can reach us, uh, as a few of you have done, uh, questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com. Uh, you can also leave comments and uh, please like and subscribe on YouTube as well. Oh. That's all bases covered, I think. That's all the bases covered. I think you've mentioned every medium that someone could get in contact with. You missed off Carrier Pigeon. Damn. We'll have to get need Mum- to fit that one we in. need to get Mumsy to add an extra layer to the bottom of your jumper that she knitted. <laughs> no one's mentioning that you can't remember the details anymore. <laughs> Listen, that feels like an age ago, Tom. But do you know it what? Does. 2019, we've already seen half of it done. Madness, isn't it? Insanity. Flown by. And as always, we like to make a mouthful of our feature names. <laughs> so 2019, the Gaming Year Six Month Review feature. This week's feature is a discussion about the year six months in. As always, you guys got in touch to share those memories of this year to date, and we're including those to add a real personal touch to this story. So here we are, six months in. What do we have to show for it? Well, an action-packed release schedule in the first two to three months probably spoiled us. Uh, We have got a great mix of games to talk about, and still some awesome games still yet to come out. These indeed are heady times. The line drawn in the sand... This is the last stand of the PS4 and Xbox One, and the latest titles show a real mastery of the system. On the other hand, Nintendo continue to make great games with their mascot and high-profile first-party selection, and the PC continues to push the white-hot edge while treading water while the consoles get a bit of a revamp. Mm, right, well, first off, Tom, um, before we go any further, we need okay. to mention the new resident in the village. He's here. Adam the Artist. He's moved in over the studio, in the studio flat above Deb's Babs, and uh, in between taking commissions for Lord Ponselbury and ourselves, uh, Mumsy got a little bit excited, Tom, because she thought that he was a painter and decorator, <laughs> and it was another excuse to get a tradesman in her bedroom. Really? I've never known such a such one room filled with that much plumbing, electrical, and carpentry. We have but lots of like uncles, don't we? Lots Those of uncles. Those uncles who, who are always around, yeah, but are mean, not blood related. No, and then sort of having a really serious leak or electrical failure in Monty's <laughs> bedroom, and then locking in there. And I mean, we listen at the door, and it sounds like they're replaying WrestleMania three. <laughs> and Mumsy comes out looking like she's been in WrestleMania three. <laughs> But uh, unfortunately, this guy doesn't paint walls with emulsion, Tom. This guy is a true artist. And as I say, in between our commissions, he works on Etsy. Now, his name's Adam. Adam the Artist. Isn't that great? Not only is he a real person, he's also got a great fictional name. So we'll, we'll, let, we'll leave that to your imagination. He works on Etsy in between, and it's www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash comic pictures. He's taken the time to do a Meet the Village section, and you'll be painting all your favourites, including the Immortal Stingray, so be sure to check out his page. Also keep an eye on our page for the Villagers bios one a week going forward. So we're going to have the Immortal Stingray, Mumsy, Wayne, Wayne Ray, Lord Ponselbury, Brian from the Garage... We're also trying to work on getting uh, Adam to do a map of the village, Farmers yeah, Hill, just so you can imagine this in your head. Because but, we're because we're audio, I think we want to build that little 
village that we've created yeah. and, uh, and, and flesh it out And if you don't like any bit. of the fictional characters, <laughs> we'll revert to a serious <laughs> gaming news show. <laughs> Click of the maybe fingers. we could maybe we could have a, a hitman arrive and take out some of the less popular characters. Exactly. <laughs> or cue uh, a plane crash or any other type. Hector so, the hitman. Anyway, they're here for the feature and we're extrapolating their patience. So he's also kindly offered to sort us out by rewarding the submission of the month by you guys who have commented in the feature. And you can pick a piece of unofficial controller art or one from his libraries. There's a couple that are off limits, but when we get to that point in time in a month's time, we'll let you know what the crack is. Hopefully you'll be wanting a picture of Stingray or Mumsy for your wall. Uh, and, you know, all good things come. So at the end of it, four, four weeks from now, we'll review and think, who was the best submission? Yeah, I mean, we have, a lot, we have a lot of great uh, feedback for the features. And we uh, we're always really impressed with how passionate you guys are about um, our hobby, gaming. So going forward... Once a month, we'll be picking our submission of the month. Mm-hmm. Nearly thought I'd called it submission of the week and we reward that monthly, which would be <laughs> as about as sensical as this show is for most of the time. Tom, this serious gaming news show was once again disappeared off its own backside. Uh, while we're on it, though, let's kick off this feature about the six-month in review because Adam the Artist got in touch and he shared his thoughts on the year so far. I think so far there's been lots of announcements, but not too much to show about what's coming. Next gen, Sony VR, PS5, Xbox 1020 times 360 <laughs> Mark IV, downgrade your Switch. A few cut scenes from the likes of Gears and Halo, which are no better than a bit of CGI, is much the same as what we could probably be calling, as we could probably call pulling a Bethesda. That's uh, hmm. quite an interesting uh, idea, pulling a Bethesda. So far, I think the best things I've seen are Cyberpunk and Outer Worlds here, here, and that's mainly because they're the only things to show off some serious gameplay. A man of the gameplay footage. I am a fan of his already. Not sure there's ever been anything that could be considered a Game of the Year contender yet. Certainly been a few letdowns. Days Gone, Rage 2, he goes on to say. Oh. Mm. Oh. Agree with some of that. Not all of that, but most of that. Uh, Tom, what's your thoughts there on uh, Adam the Artist kicking off the show? Well, um, <clears throat> he's made a good point again about the CGI overuse of potential CGI trailers and not showing much gameplay. Mm. Um, Cyberpunk and Outer Worlds both looking fantastic. Yes, very Outer right. Worlds coming um, this autumn and then um, Cyberpunk coming sort of first early next year, I think, uh, springtime. So... <sighs> It's a steady year, isn't it? Overall, it's one of those very steady years. It will go down twenty nineteen, the year that gaming forgot until Death Stranding and some other stuff came out at Christmas. Yeah, Tom, I'm feeling crazy. Let's invoke the Sharaban. 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 Loyal listener and king contributor of Stingray's boot. Um, amazing start. He says, "Keep going." Just if you could add in some trivia's winking emoji. Tom, I'm thinking that we've uh, lost something in translation from French, uh, from and to French there. Either well, either way, praise from the loyal Sir Sharaban. So we'll take it. He's a good guy, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> we would like to know what you meant by trivia there. I mean, if you if you want us to run like a little bit of a... I think what he means is it'd be a great show if you added in some facts. Yes, you need to do more facts. More. Uh, and then, any, and anything then... else you've got to tell me? Uh, before we go any further, Doogie McBain. He's another, nice to uh, him. Yeah, he's, uh, he's chimed in yet again. Did you know um, Game Boy Matty's father? Is he? Yes, keeps oh. him safe and keeps him on the retro path, straight and true. A proper journeyman, that one. Yes. Uh, used, uh, he used social media to let us know. Uh, he got in touch and said, I just pay, play my Dreamcast, so it's still nineteen ninety nine to me. Hmm. Well... I guess this feature's not for you, Doogie, but thanks for charming me anyway. <laughs> uh, you know, Sega and the Dreamcast forever in our hearts. Well, we'll have something coming up in the near future, I'm sure, when we do another retrospective or a, a deep dive on a series. So uh, stay tuned for that, please. All said and done now, Tom. Let's get into this feature proper. Pick a game. What's up first? Well, I'll take Super Mario Maker 2, if that's all right. Oh. It's got an 88 on the Metacritic, so it's... It's up there with potential game of the year contender. Okay. I think um, it's it's not going to be to everyone's taste because of 
if you don't like 2D Mario, you're not going to like it, are you? As we've said before, we prefer the 3D Marios, um, and they do no, feel... As, no, as I said before, when they're feeling lazy, they roll out a 2D Mario. It's now got to the <laughs> point where they can't be bothered to roll out the 2D Mario, so they just roll out the developer tools, like knock yourself out, guys. I mean, whatever. Make a level, finish the game in two seconds, job done. I love it, but I must admit I prefer playing other people's levels to making my own, as we discussed at the start of the show. Tell me about the game. Um, even though you thought the latest Mario game was dialed in and you feel you could do better, um, once again, Nintendo are throwing down the gauntlet and it's your turn to pick it up. Once again, a Wii U game original. Um, we should have mentioned, I think, this in the, uh, the murder of the Wii U. Because I feel it was the first game to really utilise the gamepad and and in some ways I think the Switch version is inferior because it doesn't have that you can get a stylus and stuff but obviously if you take it out of the dock it then goes off your TV screen we're talking, we talk about we were talking about the Wii U and how the Switch has done well by Mario Maker it's mm. like a footnote if you were reading the obituary of the Wii U, Super Mario Maker barely make us. Oh, make mate, it was massive on there. Massive. I've had it, a massive it was spot. The, it was the swan song of the Wii U, that game. Hurry up and kill it, and then we can... Um, but they've uh, bolstered a few things on. Uh, they've got the world from Super Mario 3D World, which looks a little bit better. It, it does make the art style seem a bit more improved, uh, along with some multiplayer action. Um, and since people actually bought nine. Uh, Ninty's latest the Switch there's likely to be more life in this long term and plenty of levels for you to try out so I think there's a, a, a way bigger user base and there's going to be more levels and just remember to check out that Luigi's Mansion level wink wink well you know like I heard they stampeded to your Mario Maker dispensary <laughs> so you know just prepare maybe it's the fact that the too many people came you didn't have enough download stream must be, yeah. It crashed and like the number peaked Look out. Look out of the way, five. Tom, because I want to talk about a bigger boys game. I've seen enough of these I mean, make a game from nineteen ninety two creators. <laughs> Tom Clancy the Division Two, switching up its epic post outbreak location from New York to Washington DC. Unfortunately or fortunately from a gameplay perspective, things are just as crazy in America's capital. The Division Two plays really well. It can be a grind, but exploring the world is really compelling. And co-op play and Dark Zone are a fun-packed distraction. 82 on the Metacritic and on the PC, Xbox and PS4. Yeah, um, The Division 2. I played the first one. I thought I was really impressed with it, actually. Um, I thought it was a real good multiplayer online. Mm -hmm. um, sort of tackling the... Going into the Dark Zone felt like a real challenge. And yeah, a, a decent, solid cover-based shooter from Ubisoft. And I've yet to try the sequel, but it does intrigue me. And I did hear a bit of a news from the developer. He put it out there. Would people be interested in saying a, seeing a single-player story-driven division game? Definitely. And I must admit, I like the setting. I think um, I know it's yet again another post-apocalyptic game, but I, I think, think this one's different. Yeah, enough. And the story that they've got in this multiplayer is probably enough to have some decent legs to make a decent yeah. one player. Yeah. They, what would that be? Would it be DLC? Would it be? What would that be? Would that be I a think. I think. Game? I think it could be maybe be a, a smaller release, a bit like they do with Far Cry sometimes, where they have a, like Far Cry New Dawn is a a, a budget release. Yeah. Something along those lines That'd would be, be cool to see. Yeah. That would be perfect. Um, do you want me to take the next one? No, I was going to say it's time for us to catch a line from the awesome Finst again. Oh, cool. He says, "Amazing start to the year with bangers like Division Two and the Resi Two remake, Days Gone, etc." The past few months have been disappointing, but State of E3 looks like there's not much else happening until 2020. At least it gives me time to get the most out of the games that came out at the beginning of 2019. Much like us other mortals, me and Finster Gamer sound like we're still trying to get Days Gone finished. <laughs> and it's gonna. it makes a solid point there that we've had some good games, and now we get to get some quiet time with them to really max them out and fall in love with them. Yeah, it's like we started the podcast... Um after a lot of those bigger releases at the start of the year. We did. Um, so it's going to be nice just if to, we'd just have to had cover foresight, those. If we had Tom, and we'd have been a cutting-edge, white-hot news show, yeah. gaming news show, you'd think we'd start around E3. You would, really. We're not bothered about that. No. We, we just thought, let's do this. Let's just do it today. 
We can do it anytime. Uh, um, Tom, game that you've uh, played the wheels off, why don't you give us a little rundown of that? Yeah, so uh, next up from a preview of uh, the, the game so far this year, we've got Resident Evil 2. Uh, Capcom, Capcom starts it off this time with a reimagining of their PlayStation 1 classic. I believe you've been revisiting Resi this week as well. Resi 1? Yeah, cool. Um, which saw a remake on the GameCube. But this one, Resident Evil 2... I uh, guess no one played that. What, the GameCube one? Yeah, you and me and... A handful of others, yeah. Yeah, so that'll be like three, three buys. Uh, Resident Evil 2 being all that's good about old Resi while implementing all the advancements in gaming between now and then. Um, taking charge of Leon or Claire, this is the classic Resident Evil in environments you recognise but all very similar. It's a remake, sure, but we think it's also the finest Resident Evil experience to date. I completely agree with that. I think it has the controls and the, the sort of tightness of 4, but... You have that fear of like what's behind me, quick turn around. And I've never played two and the when the tyrant appears, I just it felt like I was watching Terminator One. And that film terrified me when I was younger of this like invincible foe just walking towards you and you just he's just soaking up bullets and machine gun, shotgun ammo. And it's very, very intimidating. I had the headset on, I had the lights off, and it's <laughs> A really immersive experience, guys. So if you can, uh, if you can check Resident Evil Two out, if you haven't even, if you've never played the original, it's even of, better. Was there any midnight calls for Mumsy to come attend your bedside and tell you that it wasn't real? Yeah, lots of that. Oh crikey! He's not real. He can't hurt you. I've seen some fantastic mods as well. I must admit, where people are modded like Thomas the Tank Engine, he just comes oh, busting I've through the wall. Where sweet sweets is the tyrant as well. Oh really? Yeah, from nice. The, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Yeah. Uh, Tom, why don't you uh, wheel in this next guy? Uh, yeah, we've heard from a good uh, friend of the village and the show, Retro Gamer Thomas. What's he got to say for himself? Uh, he's loved the first part of the year so far. You know, it's good when there's um, as many games, but he couldn't afford them all. So he was uh, struggling how to pick one of them up. Uh, games like Resident Evil 2 Remake and Days Gone are just a couple of examples. But I've been loving the cheaper titles too. American Fugitive, Team Sonic Racing, Crash Team Racing, etc. My next purchase is going to be F1 2019. Now that is has his wheel set up. And he says, here's to the second half of the year. Well, amen to that retro gamer, Thomas. Thanks for the input. Uh, what, yeah. what do you think to some of those titles he's mentioned? Um, I kept meaning to check out American Fugitive. Came out around the same time as Shakedown Hawaii. And I picked Shakedown Hawaii. Um, I think we probably did that in new releases, didn't we? Of course we did. Yeah. Tom, all the hottest latest new releases. Absolutely. Curated by the finest show in video games. Um, see, Team Sonic Racing, I'm not really that interested in that. I'd rather it was a, a Sega All-Stars racing game. Crash Team Racing, uh, nah. Uh, we did a bit of a review of that, didn't, didn't you, we, you, the other you week? You did that, um, yeah. You played that. It's, yeah. Uh, but, yeah if you want to check that out, that's um, a few episodes ago. If you want a bit of a... Opinion on Crash Team Racing. And his next purchase is going to be F1 2019 now he has his wheel. Well, one thing I'd say about that is I saw his wheel on listen to Sting, on the hashtag Stingray's boot. Yeah. And he's got a cool set up there. I was a little bit jealous. It did look pretty Yeah, cool. that's going to be pretty awesome on yeah. F1. Definitely. Before, actually, before we move on, Ode Resident Evil 2 got 91 on the Metacritic. So currently, out of the ones we've mentioned so far, Resident Evil is the highest on the Metacritic. That's... Um, so not only can standing we, high. Not only can these big boys read, guys, we can count. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Devil May Cry Five, another game that I've played. I really went crazy at the start of the year. Um, following a resurgence with Resident Evil Seven and Two, respectively, and the Monster Hunter series uh, coming uh, with that great entry, Monster Hunter World. Capcom rolled the dice one more time with Devil May Cry franchise and its fifth outing. Mm. Seemingly ditching the DMC Ninja Theory reboot that rightly or wrongly didn't do well critically or financially. Here though, Dante is back to his very best once again, looking just as cool as ever. We think the reboot paid off and this return to form is one of its uh, of Dante's best. Couple in new protagonist V with his demon controlling powers and you have a recipe for success. Mm. Um, now you've you played uh, one recently, haven't you? Yeah. Um, sorry, we should just mention that it got an eighty-eight on the Metacritic. Mm. Uh, it's available on PC, Xbox, and PS4 at, at this time of writing. 
Mm. No other versions as of yet. Um, yeah, I've played the. I've not played this, and to be honest with you, I've I've played Devil May Cry on the original PlayStation, yeah. and then just never looked at the series again. You like one though, don't you? you I think you, one's a really good game. Yeah, mm. I think um, you, Devil May Cry Five to me has been the easiest entry for a newcomer to get into. I think obviously with that, you're going to want to watch a bit of a recap video on YouTube if you don't want to go back to the other games, but. Gameplay wise, it's, it's, it's the most Let's forgiving. Just say you don't care about a twenty-year-old game. Can you just pick up five and roll straight into it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. That's you can have a lot of fun. You can, yeah, you can have a lot of fun with the game. Um, just some of the combos you can do. The three play- playable characters are really good fun, each different in their own way. Uh, yeah, really solid title from Capcom. They've they've uh, really killed it this year. Talking of having fun with the game, Tom, do you want to? Give me a readout on this next one. Oh, here it is. <laughs> now, this to me is my potential game of the year. I'll wow. put that out there now. Wow. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Uh, if you listen to some of the earlier podcasts when we first started, this was the game I was playing and it was quite a stressful experience. But now sitting back here, having finished it, it was a phenomenal experience. Mm. Um Rage inducing at the time, but when you finish it, just the best feeling. Um, did you go so, back? Did you platinum that? No, no, I didn't know. I dare go back to it. I finished it, and that was enough for me to prove it didn't beat me. Okay. But there's always that little niggle of like, well, I could have done that extra well, why boss. Don't we let, and why don't you fill the listeners in on what this? Yeah, so sham, sham like looking game is. Tell me about <laughs> shambling mess of a game. You, you'd you love it. It's good. Uh, anyway, from, Sef- from software creators of Dark Soul and Bloodborne, we knew this was going to be a pretty hardcore game from the get-go, so we went in all eyes open, still hungry for their next um, title. Sekiro is a tough difficulty, just like previous games, and if you aren't prepared for a rapid attempt at death, uh, the death cycle until success, this probably isn't for you. But to say Sekiro is an Oriental Dark Souls is seriously misunderstanding the game. Yes, you'll need to unlearn everything you learn in forms from those, uh, like the Dark Souls series and Bloodborne. It's it's very different, um, a lot faster paced. It's sword-based melee combat, feels completely different, and it really requires a bit of a touch of skill, especially with the deflecting and you have the grapple to get around the maps. I showed it to a few friends and they were... Um, sort of surprised that it was a From Software game because it had just a very different vibe to it. It's mm. it's a lot like one of their old games, Tenchu. Um, so if you're a fan of that, I'd really recommend having a look. Which Tenchu? Um, the one on PlayStation 2? I think Be PlayStation 1. Stare f- st- no, I don't think... I'm. Pretty is that wrong? Sh- no, that's wrong. On PlayStation 2, is it? Yeah, one of the... One of the I think you might be right because I might... One of their first games was... Either the first or second Tenchu game on PS2, and I think it was the second. Ah, uh, I think you are right with PS2 because I remember getting it on a official PlayStation magazine demo. Facts. Facts. Yes. For Sharaban, all the facts. All the facts. <laughs> um, as we say, it's a great game, but like Tom, this is uh, really a game of psycho games die six million times. Mm. You snuck that in at the script there. I you must have been I keeping tally of all my deaths. anything in there and you would read it. You even read yourself <laughs> out as a third person. Surely it I am the like, rock. As we say, a great game. <laughs> but like myself, this really is a game of Sekiro dies six million times. But instead, you put yourself in there. It, I love it. Uh, Z lister celebrities speak <laughs> about themselves in the third person. You have to get used to this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe, um, maybe this is why you never made uh, Jeremy Vine's show or yeah. Jeremy Kyle is the actual guy I'm thinking <laughs> of. Uh, totally different people. Uh, what, how did it do on Metacritic, Tom? It's got a Metacritic of 90. It's available on PC, Xbox and PS4, similar to Devil May Cry 5. All the bigger boys machines. Yeah, um, a worthy Metacritic score there, I think. Can I have a go? Uh, you can. Kingdom Absolutely. Hearts 3. It's been a long wait. Too long. For luck- Luckily for us, the wait was, well, worth it. Because Kingdom Hearts 3 is truly beautiful. Now, Kingdom Hearts dates all the way back to the PS2. And yes, we've actually waited since then for the sequel. 
We've got redo versions on PS3, PS4, and exclusive editions on DS and PSP. The Disney Meets Final Fantasy role player is a hoot to play, and fans should feel right at home. Mixing the Disney worlds with original characters and some heroic Final Fantasy legends, bringing the likes of Toy Story and Frozen for the series' most gorgeous and action-packed entry to date. These games make no sense, much like this podcast. So don't feel like you have to go and play 1 and 2 just to get an idea of what's going on, because frankly, I've played 1 and 2, and I've got no idea what's going on. So don't (laughs) let that get in the way of uh, picking this game up and giving it a good old go. 83 on Metacritic, and its platforms currently Xbox and PlayStation 4. Now, it's funny you should mention about not having to play 1 and 2, because I did see it the other day for £18. On, uh, Why didn't you buy me that? I know, I ought to have done, treated you. cared you. for me? I, do, I will. Uh, I'm really curious to check that out, because I played the one on the 3DS, um, and I must say, like looking at some of these worlds they've created on with the sort of the, the tech of the PS4 and Xbox is really impressive. Uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean one looks uh, phenomenal. But, uh, yeah... Are you gonna be are you gonna be picking that up because you uh, play you have played one and two? Yeah, and I, you, I keep meaning to. Yeah. To be honest, I made a promise to the fans to get Judgment. I went and bought it. I've not do you made have, a promise to buy this yet. Do so. you have Amazon Prime? Yeah. It was on Prime Day deal, but I think obviously that's finished now. Oh, do you know what, listeners? If you have one top for, tip, yeah. Come don't to ask this Tom, guy because he'll come in with. Uh, I've heard it's Sonic Tuesday soon, so you probably want to get yourself down, <laughs> and pick up a game, a copy of that for the Mega Drive. <laughs> Talking of picking up things for the Mega Drive, Tom, I don't know why this link makes any sense. It doesn't. Day's gone. Rolling onto the PS4 with a little controversy due to conflicting reviews and bad bugs at launch. Dig in though, and this tale of deconsent John and the freak and ravaged Oregon will reward. Be it the attention to detail and the environment with its wide-ranging and jaw-dropping locales, all linked together with seriously fun roads to drive and explore. The sense of being a survivor in a post-apocalyptic environment or heart-in-the-mouth moment of terror when you unwittingly stumble on a thousand-strong herd or larger. Coupled with Ben's challenge updates, this really is a great game, and one that will grip you and reward the hours placed in it. 71, controversially on Metacritic, although I think the user score is 88. Mm. And the platform is... PS4, one of Sony's exclusives. Yeah, so I don't think, obviously, this uh, got the critic uh, critical reception. Yeah, from that uh, PlayStation wanted. No, that's but, for um, sure. It, it's interesting what you said there. It, it does reward the hours you put into it. I think mm. if you can sit down for a few hours and really invest in it, it's a far more rewarding game. Uh, those challenge updates are really fun as well yeah, um, came, um, and free. Had to go on that, which was yeah. cool. Here, I think the one this week is a biker challenge. It is, yeah. So that's, yeah, so that's um, if you do own the game, definitely check out some of those challenges. Um, I really need to do some script writing, really, don't I? Because you, how many games on here have I finished? One. Days Gone, Resident Evil 2, Sekiro. You don't want to do anything, though, Tom. All you want I to don't, do is yeah. Turn up, read the script and go. Take yeah. the money as well off the side table. Yep. Paid for my time. Mum's his prescription money. Mm hmm. I'll, um, I'll do some writing. Earth control pills aren't free, Tom. The listeners will be in for a treat, though, if I write a script. But just before the bums and ours. Oh, and right. me talking about myself in third person. <laughs> Sounds like your memoirs, Tom. And, uh, well, maybe one day we'll do an episode of that. My <laughs> Life in Gaming. <laughs> and everyone can pull up a, a warm glass of milk. <laughs> maybe... A Christmas the, fireside chat. Put the prescription sleeping tablets on hold. And dial yourself into Tom's My Life in Gaming, coming soon to a podcast feed near you. I think that would sell as well as Days Gone. Oh, No. <laughs> Tom, I think it would sell about as well as a fire guard made of ice. <laughs> Tell me, what's Sony got of, uh, what have they been up yeah, to? So, this, so this move, cheeky little wag, bring them in. What moving on. Um, what have they we've, been up to? We've looked at some of the games and now we're going to look at the uh, some of the, the big developers. Um, Sony, they, they know showed at E3 um, and uh, Mark Cerny, he revealed the PS5 and its specs. When they do these review reveals, it it 
you sometimes hikes and you want to see the machine, what it looks like, the controller especially. But we only really have got um, sort of specs, haven't we? Um, and the, the interview seemed very strange when, when they did that reveal. Kind of just crept out. Yeah. A new source you wouldn't normally expect and crawled into everyone's feeds. It was a, yeah. It was very strange. It was. Um, so far, we've only had Days Gone from them as an exclusive this year. We've had the Dreams beta, haven't we? Yeah, which uh, seems some really impressive stuff on there. Once again, Media Molecule. To be honest, we can't be bothered making them anymore. <laughs> Is the Make the games for us. Make it for yourself. Um, which, even though we are fans of Days Gone, it didn't really do uh, as well critically as its stable mates uh, did, um, i.e. God of War and Spider-Man. Uh, like Microsoft, all things are now pointing to preparations for their next console, uh, the PS5, and, and Sony are going to be looking for a big launch for that, I think. Continue their success. Yeah, um, I think... You know, the problem for Sony has been the PS4 is probably going to unseat the PS1 or 2 as being the best ever selling console of all time. I've got a funny feeling if they could run the PS4 for another couple of years unchallenged, they would. They've got no need to rush out the PS5. No, and I think if you look back at the Xbox One and PS4 generation... I didn't feel like many people got on board with those until a year or two in. I know I didn't, which was really strange. For mm-hmm. I've always been day one, get my new console at launch, even if it's got some ropey games. Um, but I was like, there's nothing I can play on that Xbox One that I can't play on my 360. That interests me. So I wonder whether it's going to be a bit of a slow sort of leap into those... Um, well, those next gen consoles. Let me. I, I think that you're absolutely right, but I tell you, someone who doesn't slowly leap, sliding in <laughs> and protecting the streets of Farmerton from gangs of Naderwells, our regular listener and superhero, independent variable, independent underscore variable twenty four. Some of us know him by his daytime name, Red Dragon Rios. He's back. Don't say it out loud. I won't. Because at night time, our kung fu toting masked vigilante independent variable 24 it's not something you shout when you're in danger it's something that you shout when you're a little bit scared and you've got time (laughs) to shout then he swings in and what does he say well imagine i'm doing this full christian bale hmm i would like to say it's been okay but with sony still censoring games and all the phil spencer nonsense about xbox being freedom of speech it's worrying but with cyberpunk coming in borderlands i'm happy Oh, and Killer Kill 2. Hmm, interesting choices there. When you're, now, when you're an unhinged village protector type. I was expecting a, a Batman voice there. Or were you going for the Bruce Wayne Christian Bale? I said I was about to do Christian Bale. Who's the Bruce Wayne Christian? I, I was going to do it, and then I warned them off and said, just imagine, imagine I'm doing it. Okay. Because can you imagine you drive... Chris McClum is on okay. his way to his next big meeting... He's got me growling down. He's going to turn it down. He's going to swerve off. I didn't want that. We're a high quality podcast. Okay. I don't feel the need to bring it down to the level where we're growling in the mic and going, I'm Batman. Batman. Chris McClum, hopefully you're car comp because you just (laughs) swerved off the road and you're now spinning wheels in the air while your retro goodies in your roof rack are crushed because Tom couldn't resist doing the aforementioned on Matt Man. Do Don't. I come over there and smash your lights? Oscat's just swerved off the road, wiped out Daddy Zilla's family MPV. Luckily, <laughs> no one's in it at the moment because they're all in the thrift store. Pack it in. No I one will. likes those bl- blooming Batmans anyway. Oh. 24 meets Batman. <laughs> Um, so Borderlands 3 uh, independent variable back to um, the games thank god yeah I've Cyberpunk. never played I just wanted to touch on Borderlands 3 have you ever played any of those yes you have as well I've not we had the original Borderlands did we yes are you sure you're not thinking of Rage no I was getting mixed up no we had those I do like the look of uh, number 3 which got a trailer recently so um, check that out they reckon there's over like a million guns in the game Quite, yeah, but quite possibly. I yeah, mean, we'll believe it eight, when we see it. 809 mils with <laughs> 800 variants of pink. Yeah, possibly. It's not difficult. 
Um, do you want to take uh, the next one? We've got Microsoft. Yeah, look out. Microsoft, all quiet until E3. Microsoft's doing well to position itself as a games as a service. Assisting this transition, they've picked up more studios to bolster its lack of Xbox format exclusives. Xbox Scarlet was confirmed, but once again, it just seems to be a water treading technique till 2020. Uh, while we're there, let's uh, take a moment to listen in to the regular contributor, the Barber Who Games, who, Tom, checking back into it, here's a fact. Do you like facts? Yeah. Our longest and most... And one of our most engaged fans. Is he? He is the only... When you go all the way back through our names of followers... Yeah. The first name that you would recognise as being a name that anyone on the show would recognise, the Barber Who Games. Oh, thanks for that, Barber Who Games. Going all the way back... To the early, to the he's first. surely earned himself a, a semi-detached in the village, hasn't he? With a with a, a large council ex council uh, garden attached to his house, or where's that now? It just extend. It's one of those real long gardens oh, you know, where they where you'd be allowed to grow veg in it back in the day. Oh yes, it's a really strangely yeah. proportioned long garden. <laughs> yeah, basically like it's having a mini- to a modern person. <laughs> Well, it is if you had a plane because you could like have a runway on the or, back garden. Or cricket. Or cricket, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, perfect. Multi purpose. What's he say? Um, he says, um, he got in touch. I'd say so far a good uh, good Nintendo uh, success, especially after the failure. I'll say so far so good. <laughs> Nintendo's success, especially after the failure of the Wii U, has been great to see. There has been so many franchises making comebacks like Ace Combat, No More Heroes, and Devil May Cry. Honestly, it's starting to get hard to keep up with all the games coming out. I think if you own either all three, I know when I own Xbox, Switch, and PS4, there is a lot coming out every week. (laughs) You know when I own every (laughs) console. You know... Proper games playing guy. Uh, tell me about that. There is. I'm one of those games. guys who does videos where he's got a collection of games behind him that he's never played. Oh my god! <laughs> These games, they substitute for my knowledge. Absolutely. Um, what do you reckon to what he's got to say there? He's a fan of the show, favorite of the Wii U. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, too true. Ace Combat. Uh, I did like the look of that in VR. It Wish I'd check that out. Yeah. It's the game I need to pick up. I'm hoping that he's going to Is that play. something you can play in co-op and sort of go full Top Gun? Who would I be playing that with? Not me, because uh, the, the, the VR <laughs> sends me dizzy. <laughs> yeah, it does. I have to lie uh, down. I don't know. I was looking into that because I just wanted to revisit the Ace Combat world and I thought that that would be a great way to do it. Yeah. Uh, again, I wasn't brave enough. I know I'm part of the problem. I like the Ace Combat games, but I don't like to support them at retail. Mm. So <laughs> they've got no idea whether whether it's popular or not. No More Heroes is exciting. Devil May Cry uh, it is also exciting. Barbo Games, as always, thank you for getting in touch. Tom, I'm going to take this last one. Okay. So I'm going to pull on your milk-stained Mario onesie, and I'm going to do Nintendo. Nintendo started the year slowly, with many expecting a Ninty Direct in January, but we had to wait a bit longer for that one, with the first one arriving on the 13th of February. I'm looking for some, but not for Ninty. <laughs> they set out their store for the first part of the year, highlighting Fire Emblem Three Houses and the surprise reveal of Luigi's Mansion 3. More followed as the months went by, with Directs featuring reveals for Link's Awakening Remake, and the new game called Astral Chain from Platinum Studios. Did I do the milk stained Mario onesie justice, Tom? You you did me proud, like a like a grade A Mario Maker two Cut level. Cut it off me. You like, you like love a it. Track you, in a car accident. I back gone. in the day, you were the biggest Mario man around. Yes, and then I moved on. Now they've had. A bit of a slow start to the year. Very slow. But when E3 came, they come out punching. And the bigger boys... Did they? They did. Looking back... I, I, you know, I saw the E3 this, was e, not E3 great. E3 was won by Nintendo, and they could they win that by announcing a sequel. and you know. They did more than that. They actually had games and games footage. And Don't get me wrong, it, some of these games are a bit like, oh, really, we've seen that on a console three years ago. Hmm. But they've got a lot of games, and the numbers from the console from three years ago. Yeah, yeah, 
I just want but, the fans to know. I want the listeners to understand. No one makes games like they do. It's a bit like Sega. Do you know what? They have their own style no of game. No one makes games like they do, so they keep writing the same ones out week <laughs> in, week out. Astral Chain, the IP from Platinum Studios. <laughs> 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 oh, tell me more about these new IPs from other developers. Well, they're kind well, of like best friend developers, aren't they? That just oh, make a lot of games yeah, for them. Platinum Studios are best friends with anyone with enough money to swing them <laughs> over to them. Tom, um, any more to say on that? I could ramble on about Nintendo all day, as you know. Uh, but... Quite rightly, I'm taking the reins out of your hands. You do that. To end out the feature, a new listener, Tom, ring the bell. Uh, we've got Tatsu Tom, Maki Shinku. Listen in to your co host. End out the show, Tom. A new listener. Ring the bell. Ding. <laughs> ding. <laughs> it was my turn to ring the bell last week. Hit it do you want a ding ding or do you want more like one of those old films that you turn on and it starts with a, a bong? That's a gong. I gong. want a ring from a bell. Forget it. Ring. The sound effect's terrible. <laughs> we probably should have saved up money and swapped out Stingray screeching drive up the drive <laughs> for a bell sound. We can only afford one. Unless it's a history of and when we can afford elevator lift sounds as well. Yeah. yeah, with lift music. Anyway, to end out the show, new listener got in touch over on Insta, uh, like you all do. And as Tom was about to pronounce, Tatsu Maki Shinku has to say this. Well, as far as six months, I don't really have much to say. I don't think anything exciting has come out yet. For the upcoming six months, though, I'm absolutely excited. Pokemon, Death Stranding, sequel to Breath of the Wild. Which I think he's gone a little early on, but <laughs> the new Star Wars and also Animal Crossing. I can't wait for Animal Crossing, lol. Well, Tatsu Makishi Shinku. First of all, sorry for pronouncing your name wrong. I think you got it about right. Secondly, thank you for getting in touch with us. Thanks for listening to the show. Hopefully you can convince one other person, and that's the show doubled overnight. Absolutely. Subscribe, <laughs> review, all that, all that good jazz. Um, I think he's about pitched this right. Six months to this He point, is a man after my own heart, all those games. Are there. I'd, I'd buy each one of those, I think. Absolutely. So, I think he makes a solid point. Six months in... Yeah. To the year so far. Doesn't really have much to say. He's more excited about the six months coming. And I have to admit, I think that's when we're going to see 2019 uh, lift up. Yeah, as always, fall is a, or winter, whatever term you want to use, it's always a lot bigger, isn't it? There's a lot more um, major games coming out. We probably get more news about um, the PS PS5. Um, I don't think we'll hear much more from Xbox this year, though, because they've said uh, winter 2020 is going to be Xbox Project Scarlet or whatever it turns out to be. Um, but, yeah, I think end of the year maybe is going to be where we might see a game of the year contender. I think so. What do you think it'll be? I think... I know it's it might be hyperbole, George, but... <laughs> it could be, it could be Death Stranding. Oh, I think that's so. I've cool. cho- uh, just before we close out, I've uh, chose uh, S- Sekiro. Uh, what do you want to choose as your um, game of gone. the year? Days, Days gone? gone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Guess what though? Because we're at the white hot cutting edge of uh, technology, Tech Mike Reviews wants to have a say. Oh, has he got something to say to close out the show? So many great games. Or the feature, sorry. It makes it hard to keep up with it, time and money-wise. Excited to see the end of the year, especially for what Nintendo has coming. Hmm. Interesting from uh, Tech yeah, we, Mike there. Yeah, we still haven't got a release date for Luigi's Mansion 3, but you would um, harbour a guess on that being round about October for Halloween tie-in. And then uh, they've got Pokemon... Um, at the end of the year and Link's Awakening in September so they've got three sort of big hitters probably going to try and push the Switch light with that but yeah thanks for getting in touch Tech Mike Reviews and thank you listeners hopefully you've enjoyed your uh, six month review yeah overall not a, not a bad six months in gaming my current game of the year contender day's gone yours is Sekiro yeah Ooh. we'll see how they stand up at, uh, when we do our yearly review when we look back yeah. If either of us are still alive 
for yeah. recording on this third rate hokey jokey podcast. Tom, the money keeps coming. Listeners, welcome to the part of the show you've all fast forwarded to. Listeners, Stingray, when the big man makes a house call, you'd better be ready. These guys got in touch to show us their pickups from Stingray's boot. You can too. Just hashtag Stingray's boot on Instagram or Twitter or email us questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com. Tom, I'm having a look here. Get switched on as charmed in first. And what's he got? Tom, you need to get your phone. Get it. We're, we're breaking the fourth wall, are we? I will just go up. and get it. Uh, what have we got here? We've got Get Switched On. He says, Happy Wednesday. He's got a couple of pickups. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit on the Wii. Uh, I suppose if you want a Need for Speed game, you might as well head there for it. And then, seeing as the Wii is home to the most insane amount of shovelware, you can imagine he's gone and picked himself up a Christmas game. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Stalling like a true legend for Tom. He can't be bothered to turn his phone off. Ever the professional. He thinks he's above all of it, so he just does what he wants. Sharaban seems to have found a location called Metal Gear to post his latest picture of Metal Gear Rising with a uh, with a quality-looking Raiden figurine. Uh, we also have a what looks like a, a new listener to the show, Tox1S, with... Uh, well, they've obviously won the Ferrero Rocher from an unofficial controller. He must have. Podcast. He's got Turret 2 there as well. Tom Bowler. Yes, he has. And what's he got there? Uh, Gears Funko of Pop. War Funko Pop. I'll take the next one, mate. Uh, Retro Gamer Thomas. Uh, he chimed in. To. He chimed in in the feature, and he's also uh, got a pickup in Stingray's boot. He gets where he's, water uh, can't this week. This Retro <laughs> Gamer Thomas. He, he certainly does. He's got a SNES Region Free car adapter. So does this allow you to play um, SNES games from different regions? You plug it into your, uh, what I presume is the UK one, or the PAL. Yeah, I think so. You need a yeah. jumper cart on the back. Okay. If I remember from back in the day, my good friend Terry Blow had an adapter like that and a copy of uh, Stunt Race FX. And he's also given us a great shout-out, uh, if you read, the only podcast to listen to for all aspects of gaming, plus they have an Austin Ma- Ma- Maestro Turbo. Legends. He remembers when we were cool. He does. He's a top Fence the Gamer. Looks like he's been busy again this week. He's gone back to collect his overpay from CEX. <laughs> and while he's been there, he's managed to get himself a couple of... No, a trifecta of gaming from the early 2000s. Mad Max Payne 2. Mad Max Payne. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's angry in the game, but he's not mad. That's, that's another Max, and he's not allowed to go over there because of copyright. So his name's Max Payne 2. The Fall of Max Payne. Black? Yeah, I played that. It's a good game. Good game. But day. he's gone and got the Platinum Edition. And Hitman 2. As I say, when you're legging it from a former employee, employer, Tom, <laughs> quality does not come into it. It's what you can get. Um, New fan of the show. Been in touch in the DMs. He slid in. Danish 80s guy. What's he gone and found? Uh, he's got a PS2 Slim, and that looks like a classic unofficial controller. So well he, done, Dave. He, uh, he is a fan favourite already. I, get, I tell you what, Tom, on these modern new fangled angle phones, you can zoom in. That you, controller is made by the aforementioned, as always, white, GameStop. white hot with the news every week, a GameStop controller. Excellent. That's going to be about as much quality as <laughs> some a controller you'd pay 20p for at Lidl. I remember uh, me and my brother had a Xbox yeah. uh, unofficial controller. Yeah. Um, and the, the the edges were that sharp on it, you'd have to take it in turns so you didn't get sore hands. These modern gamers, oh, they just yeah. don't know, do they? Radbash Gaming, a proper dude. He's gone out and picked up some DVDs, some CDs. And he's also gone and got himself Brothers in Arms on the original Xbox. We're fans of that game. Um, he's got Dracula the Gary Oldman the one that's excellent 25 film. year Wii Nintendo NES um, celebration game pack. oh cool yeah Oscat TV what's he got oh, he's, he's that... got everything he's well, got it... Catherine on the PS3 Catherine on the Xbox 360 I'm a surprised game, surprised to not is. see more Switch games there he's although well, he's he has got a... took it in front of his Switch yeah he has just, to, just a reminders there. of that immense collection Buse, he has Buse Game Room 
Uh, it's a, a name we haven't seen for a while. Views. Views Game Room. This past Sunday, I got round to replacing the thumbsticks on my N64. Uh, Kiosk. Kiosk. Yes. So that's quite smart. Um, I guess. Well, Views a bit of a... Game Room is off the Precisely podcast, I think. So, is he? Yeah, mentioned to them, mentioned for us, mentioned for them, mentioned to you. The world's big enough for us all. He said the, the cost for both thumbsticks was under $15. Uh, and surprisingly enough, I was able to swap them out. Um, nice work. Tech skills there. Yeah. Sharaban managed to find the location Gears of War. And he's showcasing his Gears of War collection. Boxed and unboxed with his little Funko Pops. Yeah. Dream Collections Retro Game. Another new name to the show. This guy looks... That's um, a Japanese Nintendo 64. I love the box art on that. Those, those like neon colours. It almost looks like it's from the 80s. Yeah, it's cool. I actually think it looks more mature than the... the than the... Uh, we got. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Fisher Price, my first console. <laughs> yeah. Bigger boys console, the N64. Yeah. Stay away. Too mature for you. Oscat TV. What's he got here? He's in a little yeah, post about... Um, who haven't we heard of from a while? Odders. Odders, yeah. We hope you're okay if you're listening. Get in touch. Just to let us know you're okay. We're going to have to put out a lost and found, aren't we? Can't, we? Like, where's we, we, Chris McClum? Where's we, we can't afford an air ambulance for this village. So. Why did Red Dragon Rears change his name to inver- Intangible Variant? Well, that, that was because of his vigilante activities. Of course, yes. We should have kept him more. Uh, you worried about Oscat not showing sh- uh, Switch games? He's gone and pulled one out. Voez. He's now 132 games. Uh, Radbash Gaming, good friend of the show. Forget all that other claptrap he's picked up. He's picked up Transformers the movie, 30th anniversary edition on DVD. And sticking with the 80s retro feel, he's got a Slimer uh, Funko Pop. Um, he's also got a copy of Siphon Filter 2 and the oh. Mask movie collection. Well done, yes. Now, Danish 80s guy here makes, uh, makes a few years of sold my Vic 20 Danish 80s guys I, I think me and you were brothers from another mother because I had a Vic 20 what a great what a great story I've even commented there as well how boring I am <laughs> Sharaban he's only been down Konami Coffee and took a picture while he was there of Rocket Knight Adventures and Sparkster on the Mega Drive two very oh, good games there very good if they weren't in our notable uh, exceptions on the uh, Mega Drive episode you need to check those out, listeners. Crispy's Video Game Journey. You've got some pickups there for the PlayStation 2. The Getaway, Black Monday. Oh, if the Mark Hammond. If, if the first one... He's peaked on the volume again. If it, wasn't, <laughs> if it wasn't bad enough the first game, they made a sequel that sold probably as well as the first one should have. Devil May Cry, though, we mentioned that earlier. Yeah. NBA Live 06. Uh, Resistance 3. Showing us the back of the boxes as well. Retro Collector Ray, uh, his only uh, car boot gaming pickup this week was a framed holographic Super Mario Brothers pick. You know you're on the white hot edge of quality when you're picking up a holographic lithograph Super Mario framed image. Now, Retro Gamer Thomas is showing off the racing wheel uh, and he's having a session on Dirt he 4. He to show like bigger boys things, doesn't he, that he's picked up? He's got a great setup, though. He's got. A, if you look in the background, now I saw these at EGX Game Show last year, that Crash Bandicoot is a, like a controller holder. Yes. Um, I nearly picked one up myself. I, I hope from Smith's Toys or other good is it? outlets. Yeah. Ah, okay. You don't um, get out much, do you? We, we, well, no. Me and you are going to have to visit EGX this year, hopefully, and get ourselves some merch and maybe... Do a bit of um, promotional what stuff. What are you doing? Oh, God. Making promises that we can't afford. We're a third-rate, mediocre, hokey You podcast. say that, but people don't realise actually how big we've become. Yeah, but we keep it real, don't we? We're grounded. We, we do, yeah. You, you keep me grounded. Thank God I do. Uh, your guy up next again? Yeah, another. Uh, that was a C64 an image of before, but this time it's the real deal. It's the VIC-20, baby. If you want to see... How some of us had to play games back in the day, <laughs> you'd count yourself very lucky. So I say like the Mega Drive was my first console. I must have had, I think it must have been, a. did the Spectrum take tapes? Yes. I remember for a, a birthday, uh, a, a good memory, I opened up loads of cassette tapes and wondering, this doesn't look like music. <laughs> these, uh, what are these? And there were games and 
I remember having some fun times with some of those. I tell you what, for the man who thinks listener Stingray goes on too long, he certainly knows how to drag out this selection <laughs> of third pickups. Uh, much like this show, it ambles on to Mr. Nintendo fan. What's going on here? Alice in Wonderland, he's, he's got himself some Disney princess DVDs. He's got a bit Disney crazy he's there. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Danny plays, loyal fan of the show. Tom's now these are great pickups, but this one because she's got Res uh, Res uh, Resi Dead Redemption Resi Two. Dead Redemption Two. <laughs> that uh, looks. Uh, I think that's the uh, the guide in good condition as well. Mint condition. Uh, Picture of the Mega great Drive Arthur Morgan on the front. As well, and Virtual Fighter for the uh, Xbox Three, whatever it was. Uh, Welsh Game Hunter. Now there's a name you haven't heard for a while. Uh, here he comes with Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic on the OG Xbox. Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast PS2. Uh, Sims 2 Castaway on the PlayStation 2. But he can't. He's not getting enough fun out of that game to compound his misery more. He's gone and got it on the Wii. So we can shake, waggle, and roll his way <laughs> through that painful thing. Looks also uh, looks. I'm not going to zoom in, but that's a Snaggletooth and a Vader he's picked up as well. Kenner original. Video game collector wolves. Uh, is he a new listener? I've not heard that name. No, before. we've video game collector wolves. Is he a fan of wolves before. or wolves the football team? Seeing as well, he's from Wolverhampton, one would imagine that he's, he's a, a Wanderers fan. fan. Yeah, and he's a fan of the town as well. One would imagine the great and mighty. Uh, Midlands, Wolverhampton. Uh, he's got Turtles Monopoly, um, Heavy he's Rain. That heavy Rain collector's edition. Is that as well. watery sprayed on to give the effect of Heavy Rain, That's or is how that it actually. Looks. That's how is it, looks. it? Get it down off the shelf, it's how it looks, and it comes with an origami swamp. You need too. to stand in front of those games and look like you have a lot of facts about games. What I do there is, if I <laughs> is ever that post for your a promo photo? And me stood in front of those games, I'm going to say. These games should be seen here as my knowledge base. The more games I have, whether I play them or not. Here he is. The big man is here. Not Stingray. It's Daddy Zilla 80. Daddy Zilla on his travels. Where did he go? Well, well he's been he's to been the Crimson Skies. He's games in Reno, Nevada, and he's picked up Pirates of the Caribbean and Crimson do you Skies. Think, do you think he's one of those guys who's getting ready to storm Area 51? In the Daddy Vada? Zilla, you can imagine him leading the charge. He Lasers can. coming out of his eyes. As and I was the atomic breath. informed by a listener in the past weeks, Godzuki, Devon Zilla, Godzuki like at his feet, spraying his laser eyes, just wiping out the whole fence, millions pouring in. Daddy Zilla sort of smashing down, probably picking a, up aliens and well, time travel guy, machines. So he probably treads on the whole secret alien room by accident, <laughs> flattens it. It's like, sorry guys. Uh, a big guy because he's a a multi-story lizard. Uh, um, Daddy he's Zilla, got though. Pirates of the Caribbean now, on the Xbox. I got in touch with him there because Pirates of the Caribbean, if you flip it over, I had this game. Right. It actually says Pirates of the Caribbean. And then because they were too lazy, it actually says this is actually the sequel to a Sea Dogs. But we're calling it Pirates <laughs> of the Caribbean for a quick really? cash in. <laughs> even though none of these characters feature in the game, this is actually Sea Dogs 2. If you bought this because you thought it was Pirates of the Caribbean, ha ha. Luckily, I played the original, um, and for a first mate, you need a real serious calibre guy. Well, uh, speaking of where he picked that up, Captain Games, um, he's posted a little picture of the uh, yes. of the store there. So that's good for some of the US Daddy listeners Zilla if they fancy a, travels, where did he go? Fancy a, a trip over there. Right for a game of Thomas. Bigger boys, bigger boys, bigger boys. Take Here a look at my driving sim rig. a zoomed out shot of my rig. And I have to say... We are envious. I want that. I do. I, I, I'm Daddy's in there jealous. again. He might not be at home, but that does not stop the pickups coming thick and fast like bullets in a First World War trench attack. $5 <laughs> on Marketplace for that. While in Reno. So he gets in Bargain. the area. He puts his feelers out. His tendrils. His retro tendrils. And he wraps them around the throat pulls them in a little bit like seeing as one that you know in uh, Independence Day spoilers for a 30 year old film Tom so I know you're going to get nervous that you might upset a fan but if they haven't <laughs> seen Independence Day they are dead to this show they are dead to this show okay you know the bit where the creature wraps around uh, uh, the the scientist yeah, night with the long data hair data from Star Trek not typecast at all playing a sciencey role and he wraps around his throat yeah. that's how Daddy Zilla gets his uh, 
pickups in. Is it? Mm. Excellent. Retro Gamer Thomas. He's uh, letting a young relative, his he's, nephew, he's first locked experience. He's his nephew in VR. He's not put him in the kitchen like I would do and scare the living daylights out of him. He's eased him in gently with Astro Bot. That's nice, isn't it? We like to see uh, like that that bond brought about by well, gaming like with to younger think we're relatives. Because if we weren't, we'd probably go explicit lyrics. We Get would. switched on. V Rally 99. Uh, Quake not because, 2. Not because explicit lyrics are cool, but that's what the bigger boys put on their albums, isn't it? So yeah. That's what we want as well. But we can't. No. Mumsy would wrap our knuckles. Backs of our legs with a hairbrush. Uh, v Rally 99 and Quake 2, they're from Get Switched On. Nice I hope pickups. he's well. We've not heard from yeah. him in a while. Welsh Game Hunter got a. I had that blue N64 controller. Mm, I had a blue one as well back in the day. He's uh, got those... Uh, this one's minty fresh, though. It's still got its baggy on its wire. It has, yeah. Unless it's just a, a sensible controller and it always puts a baggy on its wire. Mm. Very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's There's got, someone uh, who's uh, never put a baggy on his wire. <laughs> the Barbaro Games. Someone else who's never put a baggy on his wire. Got some PlayStation 2 games. A Wonder Swan. More gold link cartridges than you can shake a hairy stick at. That looks Tight to time me... split is future perfect. There's a guy who goes out, he gets pilot wings on the snares, and he thinks, Do you know what? Well, that's not enough. That's just not enough. Get me on the N64 as well. Uh, Oscat TV has got Yoshi's Woolly World on the Wii U and some Yoshi Amiibo. Um, Rap Bash got... Gaming! He's just promoting our channel yet again. He's just saying, I wanted to give a big shout out to us on the podcast. Uh, and and more sort of just general soothing our egos there. What, He's a, just a, what a great guy! What a great guy! Yeah, what a great guy! Words of of me. What a great guy! <laughs> Rambash Gaming, <laughs> kicking in again, keeping it game, keeping it on point. Unlike Tom, Soul Calibur Two, Section Eight, both on the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. Dream Collections Retro Games. What is that? A, a, Doctor Directly v's. from the world of Japan, an extremely bad machine aesthetically but very <laughs> curious. I present to you the Doctor V sixty four. To me it looks like uh I tell you what I think. There's part of the N sixty four in there, and then it looks like someone's taking like a PC C D ROM and, and, Whenever and I'm melted ever it to wheel the front. Out of fact, Tom, you happen to get on there and we'll spin out some nonsense. <laughs> Do you want to know what that actually is? Tell me. Give me some facts. I'm gonna put my neck on the line and tell you that that would sit underneath your N64. You would load a cartridge in the top of the N64. Oh. You load a CD into the CD drive, and you burn the ROM off the cart onto a CD. Therefore, when you take the CD, when you take the N64 game back to Blockbuster, <laughs> you've got a fully functioning version of the game on the oh, CD, naughty, ready to naughty. use by the Dr. V64. Rap of the knuckles. I don't know what you thought it was. That looks like it would be but very I'm much appreciated by our is. man Stingray. It would be appreciated. Uh, Sharaban, uh, let's rattle through these last ones. Don't but Sharaban, forget, he's been all the way to NASA's Johnson Space Center. He gets the Stingray running around like a dad with a seventeen-year-old son who needs a pickup from the local market town because he's had a skin full of ale. He's got a Halo collection there with a wicked Master Chief helmet. That's pretty cool, and a Master Chief statue. Not the first time I've caught you on the internet looking at helmets, Tom. <laughs> no uh, Sharaban uh, Bare Knuckle he's got Streets of Rage 2 he's as excited as you are for Streets of Rage 4 he by is. the look of it uh, Quest for Games got a selection of PS3 and PS2 games nice looking selection i tell you what you're looking at being keeping yourself busy for a while You've gone and knuckled down on enough quality to keep you busy in a fallout bunker for about a thousand years and uh, we're about back to the start with Retro Gamer Thomas's. Uh, steering wheel pickup. Sharaban. Yeah, we're back, back to the start. I think. Oh, I think we've done the full turn of the wheel. Tom, Very good. Nice if you pickups. want to get on listen to Stingray, how the hell would you do that? Uh, so you go onto Instagram, uh, put your photo on there. Uh, hashtag Stingray's boot. Photo of what? You uh, cat? You, you your pick, hamster? We'd, we'd ramble on about anything, I think. But mainly we want to see retro pickups, uh, especially unofficial controllers. And any gaming-related stuff you picked up at car Toys? Boots, uh, Anything geek-related? Yeah, any geeky stuff. If we like it, we like it. If we're envious, Tom, we probably poo-poo I'm it. I'm starting to look, and I think to myself, we've dragged out this mediocre show for an hour and 20 minutes. And there's a man at the bottom of the drive that waits for no one. Tom, he waits for no one. Do you know what? Every time he does a transaction as well... 
He doesn't talk, he just nods, because to say something would be to implicate him. So Stingray has not spoken out loud for over ten years. He's a mute. He's just not all mute. through the eyes. He just doesn't like to say anything during his business deals. Because oh. then he could be implicated on tape. He's a shrewd he's a, he's, He is a operator. shrewd dude, isn't he? He's a shrewd manoeuvre. And like a shrewd manoeuvre, he slots through the roadworks at the end of the drive, passing no care to the red light. Because he can see the other end. And he knows it's safe to go. Because he likes to play with the rules. But he doesn't like to take people's lives in peril. Here he comes, up the drive. Tom looks bored, as do I. <laughs> Stingray's bored, and he's not even a real person. It's time for a peek in what we affectionately call Stingray's boot, what's nestled between some counterfeit nappies and a dodgy copy of Battle for Andor this week. These are the new release highlights for the week 15th of July to the 21st of July 2019. Listeners, these are out on digital or physical, or will be by the time this podcast is in your feed, but it could be region dependent. I got distracted because Tom was rotating his hand forward in a clockwise formation, <laughs> I think trying to move me on. <laughs> but mentally, I was trying to find myself in the landscape of the Stingray intro that we ad lib week in, week out. And I forgot to say whether he tears up the drive or not. So He does more mileage in the car... When he gets to the driveway, I reckon, then he does go into uh, Reno to visit The Daddy man Bill whose hand Daddy indicated Zim. for me to hurry up is now rambling. now ramble. He tears up the drive. He's already been at once, but he, <laughs> he reversed in silence because we can't afford the reversing noise. And he's teared up again. Listeners, the springs have stopped. The door's out. He's furious. He spent double the amount of money on fuel that he would be on the drive. And quite frankly, he wonders why he bothers. If a third-rate fictional character feels like that, Tom, listener, I feel sorry for you. Dig in, Tom. Approach the ray. Usual rules. No eye-to-eye contact, skin on skin, 40 to 60 degrees, touch only with a stick. What are you pulling out? What's in there? Uh, no, I want that one. That's my, okay. that's my mummy mummy. Do your mummy mummy, then I'll do mine, then we'll read out the rest of the claptrap. So the first one's your mummy mummy? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll take the next one. But first off, I'm, are we okay to get a video this week? Absolutely. Okay, I'll have a rummage. I'll tell you what I'll pick as my video. What? BMX Bandits starring Nicole Kidman. Cool. The 80s action BMX story about kids <laughs> tearing around on their BMXs and thwarting criminals. Sounds pretty badass. It's right up your street. Uh, well, my video this week is uh, The British Empire with Chris Barry. Oh, Tom, that's twice. Last week it was The Hook, and this week it's The British Empire starring Chris Barry. Of, of immortal... Red Dwarf fame. Oh, my goodness. Is it Gordon Britters? Gordon Britters. Oh, I remember it well. Uh, yeah, first up, uh, we've got Ether Born on the PC, PS4, Xbox, and Switch. That's out July 18th. Delve into an environmental puzzle platformer built on exploring and understanding gravity shifting structures. You are a voiceless being that has just been born into a world where a bodiless voice awaits your arrival. Go forth and seek your purpose. Mm. My mummy mummy. Um, it's probably a little bit tight this week between BMX bandits and this, but I'm going to go on this. The Summer Catchers for the PC July 16th. You need to check this out, guys. Summer Catchers is an epic road trip adventure of a lifetime. With your trusty wooden car, embark on a quest from the frozen north to distant lands full of mystery. Strange creatures who ready to who ready to both help and stop you from completing your quest of finally seeing summer. Sounds cool, that. Yes, very much. Yeah. Um, I've got a friend who will like this next one. His name is Nick Tyres, and he's a big truck driving man. Sounds like the sort of guy that should take the time to get someone else to subscribe to this show... Write a review on iTunes and leave a five-star rating. He is that guy. I, I think with this little shout-out we've done for him, I think he can be persuaded. That means that we've only got another 4,464 million shout-outs to go before we're the most popular podcast Absolutely. in East Anglia. Uh, so I reckon I'm going to convince him to pick this one up. FIA European Truck Racing Championship. It's out on the. No, it's too fun for him. Is it? It refers to this, the more simulation of just driving very boringly around. Not boringly, uh, Tom. Yeah? With intent and purpose. These things like you're putting a good shift in. You're yeah, delivering exactly. the goods. Like an Asda delivery man. Other supermarkets are available. Once um, again, no need. Yeah, so 
FIA European Truck Racing Championship out on PC, PS4, Xbox and Switch. All the hits. July 18th. Yes. The only official simulation. Oh, it is a simulation that features all the unique characteristics of the ETRC and offers all racing fans a completely new driving experience. Race a giant 5-ton, 1,000 horsepower truck against 12 competitors while respecting the race rules to avoid penalties. He, see, he will be all over that like a rash. No, I think that he would be more into... Like the rash he is, smothered all over a simulation racing truck game. feel like we've done this before, <clears throat> but we can't have done. Tech Corp on the PC, July 18th. Tech Corp is a game where you try to become the biggest tech company in the world. Your goal is to become the next big shot in the tech industry. This game also takes place through history, starting in the early 90s and going to present time so that's like um is this sort of a sims type game park management game, game dev story yeah but with gadgets not games ah interesting so this better be my mummy mummy this bringing week. up the rear as always tom <laughs> uh marvel ultimate alliance 3 the black order uh, that's out on switch july 19th Marvel Dream Team. Assemble your dream team of superheroes from the Marvel Universe, each with their unique superpowers. New heroes, the Guardians of the Galaxy, Falcon, Scarlet Witch and more join the Ultimate Alliance for the first time. It's got an original story. Superheroes and supervillains battle Thanos and the Black Order across the Marvel Universe in this new original story. Local and online multiplayer. The game can be played offline or online with up to four players on a single screen or using multiple systems. Now, I, th- I thought that would be your mummy mummy. It is. I said it was. Oh, sorry. I thought you picked the racing. You no, no, racing that's uh, that, that's Nick Tyres. Again, mentioned his name. He's got two shout outs, so he better does two reviews mm. under a different name. And, and then get two of his family members to sign up. Even if he hijacks his nan. We are probably the world's biggest pyramid scheme, aren't we? We we get one on board, then they get two on board, and then three. Even Scientology looks at us and it's their knees back. Tom together. Cruise shakes when he hears our company's name wow you does. think if we got him a big enough medal he'd come and work for us he would he's like Muttley on the Dig Dastardly isn't he he'll do anything for a medal he will he <laughs> loves a medal <laughs> Tom it's that end of the week again you weren't going to ask me but I'm going to be polite and ask you what you're <laughs> hoping to play Um, I don't know maybe some more Mario Maker 2 I, I'll always say the no, inevitable no, overwatch please Oh god! And some games I'm getting sick to death of. Mario Maker Two is one of them. The other one is Overwatch. Then you leave me. No, the other Red, one is Dead, Red Dead, Dead Two. Redemption Two. Now you need to pull your finger out, get back on Red Dead Online, and finish these new missions with me. Proper story missions. I played it the other day, Egg. mate, and it was, like, it was like playing the single player. Beg. There's no griefers. Beg. Beg. Please, please, please. Can you come on Red Dead Online for a bit, please? This is one time where I'm going to shoot. Any more, I'm going to use the show as my vehicle. So I don't have to. Can one of you send your game attack to Tom? And you two can play Red Dead Online together and, and do all that bigger boy stuff. You you enjoyed it when you played it. it makes me sad that you become... I don't want to go back to it. You're like old Ben Kenobi who just... Doesn't want anything to do with the modern... No, how dare ...empire you? of how gaming. How dare you say that <laughs> whenever I finish the game George dead to me I never go back to it this is different it's got online oh, I'm on about single God. player you're part of the problem we built characters and everything built a backstory for them yours is just dead in the online world it's like a ghost of the old west that's far more exciting than the storyline we came up with <laughs> for our multiplayer playthrough. That's a fact. Do you remember when we just sat at that camp and that guy just kept griefing us saying, I'm the best, what was he, like the best shot in the West he kept he calling himself? He was himself. the best fist fighter in the game. <laughs> <laughs> and then for the next 20 minutes cons- conspired to spam our camp and punch at my man's face. It's not like that anymore. The bigger boys can't hurt you online. Whatever. Okay, what are you going to be playing, dude? Oh, I've been waiting one hour and 30 minutes to find out what you were going to ask, and I'm going to tell you. I'm going to play some more Minecraft, I'll be absolutely honest, but I'm probably not going to dare mention it again, because you'll start seeing, not that we're 16 episodes in. Minecraft is your over. I've only mentioned it in three episodes, two episodes so far. I've got plenty of mud to stomp out that hole, I'll tell you. Over to my right-hand side, 
is a copy of Judgment for the PS4. Because when I make a promise, listeners, I keep it. Like the milkman of the village, he always delivers. Well, just ask Mumsy. <laughs> mm. Three pints of cream every morning gets delivered with a hell of a lot of noise. Yeah. We're not... We're usually tucked up, aren't we? No one needs an alarm clock when Mumsy's got a to-the-door delivery of milk, that's for sure. Uh, and I'll be playing on the... I PS- see you've picked up Judgment. I've just said well. Judgment. Made promise to the fans. Sorry, yes. Picked up Judgment. I will play that probably this weekend. Get Days Gone finished. I keep thinking of my name for hours <laughs> right. finishing it. And I'm, I'm like, I'm riding to the next scene. And it's, hey, Deacon, you want to stop by? Got a job come up for you. Oh, is this another pointless uh, bounty hunter mission? No. Is this a Marauder Camp mission? It's quite a long yes. game. And I think they could have tightened it up by actually taking some of that out. Yeah, I agree. Because at times you feel like you're progressing the story and then you get a, can you mm. come do this by the book mission? As the, you, you could almost say the there's actually game. too many camps. Even though the um, map in the end is quite big, I not think. Not too many camps. Too many... Uh, just too many formulaic Sorry. missions. Yeah. That don't mean anything. Mm. Like there is some filler front and back that sometimes when you get to the back end of that said mission you feel a little bit like, oh yeah, you know, that's edgy. But other than that, it's it's gone in a heartbeat. You're not thinking about it. Well, Talking that's about all we've got time for. Oh, why don't we link into it thinking like this? Talking of things that have gone in a heartbeat, Tom, what have you got that's gone in a heartbeat? That's all we have time for. This show, George. This show, is that what I should say? <laughs> I don't know why we type all this out, because to be honest, you don't read it. What is I, it I was going to take the outro for the first time ever. Oh, he, his, his confidence builds as he slowly absorbs elements of this show. There's not much room for left for us, listeners. You and me, we're, we're just padding to this guy. What? what? My powers have doubled since <laughs> last time we met, Count. <laughs> You need to return with the Christopher Lee line, but I struggled to remember that one. I'm not geeky enough to remember anything yeah. from the prequels, oh, apart from Battle for Poodoo. <laughs> and the bit where Anakin walks in and he's like, you can definitely tell the director, slow down, slow down. Oh, they, oh, they don't count. <laughs> only Phantom Menace counts. It's the only true prequel. <laughs> oh, what? And Tom, <clears throat> much like... We've dribbled on and off. Yes, so please, what's it time? What have we got time for? And that's all we have time for you this week, listeners. As always, thank you for your time and we look forward to the pleasure of speaking to you again next week. (laughs) Until then, happy gaming. And remember, there's nothing wrong with being given the unofficial controller. It's what you do with it that counts. Cheers, George. Wow, he's really got the wheel of the show. See you next week, Tom. (laughs) 